I want to assure him and all of you that Akonta Mining is not engaged in any illegal mining anywhere in Ghana as we speak. This is Ghana Tonight on TV3. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSTV channel 279 and all across the world on 3news.com. So that's the president, Anadu Dankwe Kufuado, there talking about the Akonta mining. This was on the 4th of January, um, indicating that that company was not involved in any mining at that moment. But to many, this, this statement alone coming from the president uh, was not good enough, especially as investigations are ongoing concerning this said company about their reported involvement in illegal mining in forest reserves. Let's go on now and, and get a bit more into this. Joining me in studio, Daryl Bosso is the Deputy National Director of Environmental NGO Arocha Ghana. Daryl, thank you so much for joining us on, on Ghana tonight. It's a pleasure. And now, does it concern you that, I mean, after the President made that statement on Akonta mining, there's really no update on investigations into the reported legal activities of Akonta mining in, in, in forest reserves? Yes, I think, um, Alfred, as you know, we, we have been very much concerned with the statements the president made. And I would say that since then, we have also been doing our own groundwork. And I think what we needed to see government do is actually to initiate action to actually even um, more or less call Akonta mining company to, 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 uh, to order because as you know, it is not just about a mining activity that was done one time and it's gone, all the repercussions are, are gone. Uh, I mean, the impacts are there, if communities are suffering from it, their water bodies are still polluted and all of that. So I think the question everybody was asking is not about whether as at the time you were talking, mm -hmm. Akunta Mining committed an illegality or not. It's whether the action of Akunta Mining actually was an infraction of our, of, of, our, of our national laws when it comes to mining and in forest reserves in particular, and what was the government going to do about it. So it's, it's quite worrying that we have not seen any national level action by the government or the Ministry of Land to follow up. As you are aware, um, it's now that only civil society has taken action to try and really bring um, the action, uh, our counter mining into order because we think that um, what has happened in terms of exposing the forest to the damage and also the water bodies and all of that, we just can't gr gross over it. I yeah. see, but yeah. uh, what's the real picture, I mean, on the ground when it comes to the fight against illegal mining? Are we winning the fight? Because you hear the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources and uh, you know, his deputy talk about we're, we're winning the fight, uh, what water bodies are becoming cleaner. Is that re the reality on the ground? Alfred, I think um, I would give credit to the Minister and his deputy because I think they've, been, they've done very well in terms of their PR around the Galamse issue. But the evidence on the ground shows otherwise. And, and as long so as you, you are see... you commending them for their PR. Oh, yes, they are doing PR. very good with the PR. But and not and the I, I always say that they've been very good with the PR. This is a smart co communication they are doing. But you know, unfortunately, that is not resolving the problem. The evidence on the ground, uh, the evidence we see in our rivers and water bodies all around us, the evidence we hear about some encroachments in forest reserves across the country and all of that, tells you that Galamse is still ongoing. And most places, if you go to the western region, parts of the Ashanti region, and also parts of the eastern region, you see the water bodies are still unclean, still polluted. For, that, for as long as you keep seeing that, it tells you that mining is still ongoing, illegal mining is still ongoing. And, and, and I think that we, ha we cannot say to, for, for certainty that we've been able to address it. So I think that we need to do more than just spend a lot of time doing PR as, as the government is doing now. I see you, you heard Professor Kwabena from um in, in that interview yes. on, on national yes. television. Yeah. In fact, let's play that video. Let's play that video just for the benefit of our viewers. And then somebody put it out there, ah, from Bombarting has taken 500 scale. What am I going to do with it? There was an orchestrating scheme even within the party and the government to get you out to get you out so that look why is it when i left now everybody's in the forest at that time you dare not enter the forest yeah you know but as i said i don't want to go into details now because i have a lot to say on that mm. but let me tell you that i did not take one excavator for anything and they know the truth 
Now, things are coming up. You know those who are um, behind, behind it and the party people who are there, people in government, including Jubilee House, who are doing Galamse and so on, even now. Okay. Now, would, would you support calls, I mean, for the police and other agencies to investigate that, that statement by a former minister who was charged with fighting Galamse? Yes, I think it's, 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 it's a good call to actually ask the police and our investigative agencies to really look into this. But I think the other thing that we also have to be concerned about is how, what will be the direction of this investigation? Is it just to make the former minister look bad or really to unearth the truth? And I think that in most instances where we've had some of these issues, um, we, we find the person, the plaintiff, actually being made to feel like the person is guilty rather than the truth really being uncovered. So I think that it is good, it's a good call to really unravel the truth behind this issue. And if, as he said, there's still some people at the, at the presidency still engaged in illegal activities, galamsey activities, we need to really get to all of these people and make sure they also face the full rigors of the law. And I think that it's, it's, it's really um, very sad to hear that this is really all still ongoing and it's being led by people in the present. I think there's been a lot of doubt. A lot of the citizens mm -hmm. have actually complained that the reason why Galamse is still ongoing is because of politically exposed persons being supported by people in high office and all of that. But we've never really had anybody to come out really and say that, look, this is it, this is it. And he was inside the, inside the system and he's coming out to tell us, look, this is what is going on. So I think that there's every merit of, of truth possibly that we all need to find out and unearth. And I think that it's good that security agents have been called upon to really probe into this matter. And I guess the citizens de de deserve the truth, eventually. And you have been doing, and Dara, I'm talking yeah. about you, Arocha, and, and, and your agencies. You've been doing a lot of work in the, in the Etiwa Forest. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show our viewers some pictures that we got exclusively on some Galamse activities in the Etiwa Forest this was in the first week of February. This was after the president had made that statement on the 4th of January this year that all forest reserves, forest reserves in this country are being guarded by military personnel. He said the army had deployed the personnel to guard forest reserves in this country. Etiwa obviously is one of them. So we got, we got these pictures and I showed it to you earlier. And so this is it. I mean, th th this is evidence of the illegal mining that's Galamsey that's going on even in the 12 forest after the president made that statement from the first week of February. In fact, to, to, to the end of February, we monitored this. And also we got some in the first week of March. I mean, can you confirm this? I mean, by your work in the 12 forest, have you come across such reports of illegal mining still ongoing even after the president's statement in January? Yes, I think this um, became a big issue, big news uh, for all of us because I think we're actually surprised to see that even after the president's statement, we have some illegal miners moving and encroach upon the forest reserve. And as you know, um, when the information was put out there, the, the Forestry Commission quickly moved in to actually apprehend the culprit and took action, and which I will say was quite swift. But even right after this incident, we saw of other cases in other parts of the forest, and these places were, these persons were also arrested. So it really tells you that that bit of the state, the, the narrative that has always been the forest reserves have been called on off and the president said that we also had the, the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, uh, Monable um, Abu Jinapo, also talk about the fact that, and this was in a statement on the floor of parliament, where he said that all the forest reserves are protected and they are entered, and that is where we really beg to differ because on the ground it's not the case. If you don't see mining, illegal mining going on in forest reserve, you are seeing serious illegal logging activities going on, you are seeing serious encroachment from farming activities, and I can say for certain that no forest in this country is paired with some of these illegalities. And so to say that our forest is entered, our forest have been called on off with military men and all of that, I think we need to really see that evidence. And there's nothing on the ground to show that. Now, no forest reserve in this country is spared of illegal activity that is logging or mining? 
or even in farming activities and all of that. I don't think there's any forest reserve that is spared that so, particular So when you track. see these, you reported it to the Forestry Commission? Yes, as far as we know, because we work around, we see the activities of these people, we make a report and sometimes they take action. Most times too, because they're also of um, challenges with personnel and all of that, it's not every case they can follow. But I mean, as you follow and engage with communities also, sometimes the communities themselves also take action to address these things.